Hi. Well, welcome to our metrics model meeting, April 11th. Um, so it's great to have you here. I have a few things on the agenda for today. Um, feel free to include anything that you'd like. Uh, and we'll go ahead and get started. So the first thing today is um, I did issue a pull request, which is a pretty straightforward one for the metric model template, which was just adding the part which was metric model validated by. Remember, we had proposed to include this, like it could be validated by Augur, it could be validated by OSS Compass, you know, whatever it might be. So that if somebody could go in and merge the pull request. A comment or, <laughs> or edit in, whatever, I don't particularly care. I can merge it. Okay. You, know, you go. Get your little GitHub token credits for the day. I contributed. And hopefully that makes enough sense. Just validated by. I see there's a few open PRs from you, Matt, making changes to that. So I'll actually sort through them, make okay. sure that I don't conflict anything. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank you. I didn't even notice that. You, usually, if you merge them in the order of first to last, it's fine if it's coming from the same person. but. Do you okay. work? Um, the next thing that I wanted to talk about was um, the influence metrics model. So this had come up, actually, it, it could kind of be down here with the uh, OSPO meeting. So one of the, in the OSPO meeting, one of the things that I did was I kind of went back to our initial sets of goals that we had established. So if you look at those minutes um, and tried to identify an agenda around those goals, like what are things that we can do to try to address those goals? And one of the goals in the OSPO meeting, amongst other things, is to develop metrics models. So I, th that's what this goal is here. So this is straight from the OSPO um, working group. All right, so we had talked about a couple different metrics models, and this is to kind of address the you know, demonstrating value of an OSPO within an organization. That, that conversation uh, continued on in the last OSPO meeting. And one of the ones that had come up was, or that I had brought up, was the influence metric model. Um, and I should probably put it on here, but the influence metrics model is one that was brought forward by uh, Shoya and Frank. Does anybody remember this conversation? I do, actually. So, so yes, let me... Do. Let me bring this up. Oops. <clears throat> um, let's see. Influence. So I had kind of kind of tightened this metric model up um, just a little bit. So you can put it in the chat here. You'd like to take a look just straight up. So this is really about showing um, an organization or uh, an organization's ability to have an influence on a particular project. Sophia had brought it up kind of as a as a counter as well at Google. Sometimes an organization wants to let go of influence if they're open sourcing a project that they want to demonstrate that they're actually turning it into an open source community. So I don't know what people's thoughts are um, here with respect to the influence metrics model and how it might actually be helpful from a value, an OSPO value perspective. I'm interested in what Don has to say, but my reflection is, is that um, these are the kinds of metrics that uh, do, do indicate that the uh, organization has, has influence in the project if, if you're active and getting your change requests accepted, especially. Um, I think that that says that that is a signal of influence. I would take so this, this is the influence of um, 
like the influence that a project has relative to other projects is that this would be so like in this case um if i come down i think to this one it's identifying the people who work within your organization and the influence they have either within a particular project or within an ecosystem of projects it's okay. both And that influence is identified kind of like through your employees, you know, affiliation with these types mm -hmm. of things, like being, you know, um, participants in change requests and change request reviews and those accepted as demonstrations of influence. I feel like that's not what the why it matters at the top says. Okay, we can change that. Um, yeah, of re not of repos, of Yeah, because things like like upstream, the, the, yeah. So this this is what I felt reading. This is why I was a little bit confused by it. By reading it, what I'm seeing is is it's measuring two completely different things: the influence of projects and the influence of people. Um, and I think that that carries down to looking at the metrics and the metrics model because like upstream code dependencies, that's a repository metric and not a people metric. Um, these two were added from the discussion in the OSPO working group. Not, they were almost just added like as maybe these are things to think about as well. Yeah. So the original metric model just kind of stopped there. Yeah. I would need, I guess I would need to think about this a little bit. It feels, it feels like it's trying to do two, two things, yeah. two different things, both of which are in, incredibly important. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think, yeah. So I don't think it's possible to have an influence metric model um, because uh, because the influence of projects is just completely a completely different thing than the influence of people. Um, I think they're both important. I would I would make them two two separate. Okay. Metrics. We can do that. We've done that before yeah. to yeah. separate. Yeah. <laughs> and there are a lot of metrics in the model, so that suggests that you're right. I was comfortable with the cognitive dissonance, but I am completely in aligned with your point now. Well, if I understand correctly, uh, the influence is a general purpose algorithm which can calculate the, the influence of a, a node in a graph. Well, the graph could be a graph of contributors or a graph of repositories. So I think it's more like a new new way of calculating a new metric. So taking your point, one way to think about this is like when I think about the implementation and the word influence and its multiple meanings, an implementation could provide both perspectives with a parameter change. Show me organizational influence. Um, or ecosystem influence, and then show me individual influence. So from an implementation perspective, I can see where I'd want to go to this thing influence and be able to pivot between one or the other. And, and I think the way we've conceptualized metric models is initially they were like they had too much uh, and they were hard to understand as a coherent thing. And <clears throat> so I think the I think the discussion about this being two metrics models is aiming towards each metric model being coherent within itself. And I hear your point, Ling, being the way that people want, may want to consume this is to just go to a thing called influence and take each perspective on it. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> if I'm completely wrong, I just say so, it's okay. <laughs> well, I will say, I mean, from a metri <clears throat> metrics perspective, we do have metrics that are oftentimes very similar to each other. Like I think in, in the DEI working group, 
we have like an event correct me if I'm wrong Elizabeth but like a couple of metrics that are really close to one another but we've taken the time to separate them just from a clarity perspective do you know what yeah, like doc, just for example documentation <clears throat> we have like documentation <clears throat> discoverability we have documentation uh accessibility. accessibility so it's you know basically all around documentation but it's yeah very specific things about that and that, yeah, specific to that conversation, I think we had originally one metric called like all things documentation and yep. a little like this, like all things influence. And it over time, we're like, we need to separate this out. We are just like stepping on our own <clears throat> as we walk through the narrative and it's confusing. Yeah, and I think I think the other thing that I find um, confusing about this particular model is if you look at the, you know, there's a whole list of metrics in the metrics model, and it's not clear how any of those feed into the influence um, algorithm that Liang was just talking about. So I, I think the influence algorithm is absolutely fascinating, and I love the, you know, like the network look at it, but I don't understand how how we got from this list of metrics to that particular um, those particular influence calculations. Well, this so it's not clear how, how the two how the two got together. They feel completely separate to me, but I might miss something. I agree with you, Don. I think uh, the influence is an algorithm which can can something like page rank, and uh, they are built from a graph of, for example, the repo. <laughs> the repositories, but uh, the it's from the raw data from the network of the repositories instead of the metrics mentioned in the related me metrics section i think mm -hmm. what, oh, this is based on the uh, my understanding of the algorithm sorry sorry Tom. yeah no go ahead okay i'm uh, i'm i'm done Okay. This is my understanding to the algorithm. <laughs> um, Matt, my other question is where where is this in the process? Has it already been um, PR'd into the repository? Okay. Yeah, I I'm not sure what to do with this. I find I find this metric model um, uh, deeply fascinating and insightful, and I also find it incredibly problematic in the in the way that it's written. And so I'm not quite sure what to do with it. I both love it and hate it at the same time. Is the key problem is that it's that it has these two parts to it that are kind of confounding on each other? Is that the key key problem? Or, sh or should like an edit pass also be included just for clarity of purpose? Well, I think I, so. I, I think there's I think there's two things. Like when I look at the list of metrics um, that, that we had at the at the top some of those were people metrics some of those were project metrics and it wasn't clear like how how that all worked together and then it doesn't appear that those metrics are used at all in the rest of the model which is all of the influence calculations which is the part that the influence algorithms which is to me looks like the most kind of the most interesting thing about this about this model itself but it's not clear how any of our metrics actually fed into that influence model because as Liang said, it's like a it's like a network graph. That's the data that that was used to create it, which is different than than what we've specified. So so on the one hand, I on the one hand, I wonder if this is even I wonder if this is really a metrics model. I guess I'm just not even sure what to do with this because it feels like too many different things. So Ling, correct. Let me read. I think so. I've, I've done a lot of social network analysis work with this kind of data in my day. I, I think the, the graphs are intended to represent influence from a sociogram visualization perspective in each case that, that these, these sociograms, which is what these things are called, are probably weighted based on the values um, returned by each of the individual metrics that affect them. So it just looks like a bunch of connections, but I strongly suspect that it's weighted based on the values returned by the relevant metrics. I don't know if Ling is the person who knows how this was arrived at. I'm not saying that it's not, that this isn't 
confusing definition wise. I'm, I'm just trying to unpack if my understanding of how the metrics relate to these visualizations is reasonably accurate. <clears throat> okay. Well, I'm, I'm not familiar with this algorithm too either. Ooh. Who did it? <laughs> I think Shaya, Shaya and Frank did it. Frank, uh, I think Frank, Frank did it. Right. And uh, the length of the, the value of the land, it means uh, maybe the uh, one, pe uh, one people review other people's pull request, it will count uh, four, like, like this. So, <clears throat> um, after they collect uh, this value, from people to people, um, they will, they will, uh, they will be able to find out who is the really maintainer or who is the key people, who is the <clears throat> who is the uh, most important people in this project, like this, and and. Uh, for project, for repository, they will find which repository is most fam familiar, which uh, uh, problem maybe um, will be more popular. Yes. In those, oh, yeah. And, and, and that, that uh, I, I agree with, uh, with you guys so maybe we can maybe we can use... sorry that's uh, my task timer going off <laughs> uh, okay. yeah I, I think uh, they and um, page rank they use page rank um, algorithm so I think um, maybe we can separate the algorithm in some place and uh, we can use it in form many form many metric model it sounds like maybe we should so i think can we decide about whether because i think the implementation could occur to provide both of these perspectives on influence if there were two different metric models like i don't think that affects an implementation I wonder if we can decide to try to separate the implementations or the metric model definitions, but I feel like maybe we need to wait for Shoya or, or the other designer of this model to Frank. figure Frank to figure mm -hmm. it out to know what some of this actually even means. Yeah, and I, I think I think it would be better just so rather than talk about breaking this out into two separate um, metrics models right now, I would maybe focus it on on the people side because that looks like what they've done. Um, you know, if you look at the graphs, you know, people people have influence in projects, right? So so you need the project element because that's where the people have the influence. So so that bits that, that's important, but. Um, some of the the other stuff that looked like it was added by the the OSPO group, the uh, was it upstream code dependencies? That that's more of a project against project um, influence, which feels very different. I would just I would I would simplify this and make sure that what we're talking about is the influence of ultimately the influence of people, and then figure out whether we need a separate metrics model that's the influence of projects against each other because that that feels like it would be completely different. It's almost like like external influence versus like internal influence also because I know we have a metric that's in progress called contributor development influence, which is like how influential the person is externally like how many followers do they have and how how much does their weight count you know in the in the project ecosystem in general, but it's more externally focused, so I wonder if there's also a, co a component of that where it's like. The project is externally influential because of all these other projects depend on that and so therefore it's an important project and it needs to be uh, maintained it needs to have resources given to it and i think that that's what they were kind of looking for is like how important this project is to others and to the whole open source ecosystem yeah yeah which is which is a really interesting 
um, way to look at things. It just feels different than looking at it from a people perspective, for sure. Okay, well, let me, um, I'd be happy to take this on kind of as an action item um, to also kind of go through the text where necessary to continue that focus on people. Mm -hmm. So it's not confusing reading through. Maybe you do it, do what I do with papers and take out the parts that refer to yeah. the ecosystem and throw it in a random document that can be re reassembled later. Mm, okay. What am I doing? Okay, my anyway, one of my keyboard commands stopped working. So, uh, so would you? I did. Also, in Compass, I'll put a hold on this. This was just to validate, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I, I'll, let me, let me I'm going to just close the, I'll just say, should I close this? Because this is, this is actually kind of addresses one of the questions that you have done, which is how, how do you implement this thing? How do you yeah. go from the metrics to the graph? And I, I don't know if you I, want to try to do parallel or I, I don't know if I close it or if I maybe add some comments about how it's evolved. You know, it's um you think you think there's there may be two metric models here that diverge and, and maybe and I guess the really the question then is listening to what was just said, do you want this to include both the individual and the organizational or the, the project influence or or is the intention of the originally proposed metric model simply the individual which sounds like is actually the case but but i think it's important not to say that we're removing the project piece because right Agreed. because we're talking about in, people's influence in projects and influence in repositories the bit that I recommended removing was the bit about upstream code dependencies, where you're talking about projects influencing other projects. When you take the people element completely out, um, the the project project to project influence is the bit that feels out of place to me. Mm -hmm. But I do think you still need to understand the how the people influence various projects because that's an important part of what I think this network is is capturing. Does that make sense? It, it does. I got it. I think I have it. Like, like remove the project to yeah. project. I think was the point. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll do that. I'll keep this here. I we'll see what they say. It might be interesting to see how <laughs> they work towards implementing it. <laughs> Just yeah. what the initial thoughts are. Okay. Great. Thank you for that uh, real nice conversation. Um, I, left, I left a couple of comments in the document itself okay. as well okay. because I, yeah, Great. I really, I really find this fascinating. I love, I love this influence. I'll do yeah, it. and you think it would be useful in the hospital <clears throat> sense that value conversation? Okay. Yeah, I do. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, another one that came up. So we have another one, and not quite sure what to do about this. Was we have project awareness. I'm sorry, I'm not linking to the actual metric on the chaos page. So this one is released. So this is a released metric model. Project adoption is one that is kind of sitting there, but it's not been released. So as pointed out here. And so these two kind of were brought forward again with respect to that value conversation but gosh when you start looking at both of them side by side <laughs> so they feel like they they land on top of each other sometimes and it wasn't clear kind of what we should do here i can i can talk about how i see a, adoption versus versus awareness i mean i see 
I see adoption as a subset of of awareness. So so our projects awareness. Okay, you touched on those things now. I just remember the entities. Sorry, does somebody have a comment or does somebody think they're on mute? Okay. <laughs> um, so I didn't want to talk over somebody because I know there's a time delay in some some geos. Um, I see I see adoption as a subset of overall awareness. So when you when you look at a project's overall awareness, you you see things like you know um, you know like it's it's presence in social media or you know the number of people contributing to it or you know lots of stuff around it. And then the actual adoption I see is, and this is probably part of my CNCF bias, um, is that we tend to look at adoption as, as end user adoption, the people who are actually using this as an end user. Um, and so I see I see adoption as, as a piece of awareness, but kind of a cohesive piece of awareness. Gotcha. That makes sense. So following that, do, do these metrics to you speak to awareness? versus should they be reconsidered as part of the adoption subset? Um, this is currently released. This is the released one. Yeah. No, I would see those I would see those as awareness and not necessarily adoption. okay. Um, because none of those none of those to me say that you know I'm, I'm VMware and I've picked up this project and put it in my product and I'm shipping it to customers. None of this says anything about like how someone uses the okay. project. Itself. Okay. And then here's adoption. So, yeah. So I remember this discussion because the challenge with adoption is that there is absolutely no way to measure it via trace data in any kind of reliable way. And you can only sort of intuit it out based on lots of lots of different things. Is this yeah. proposed as a metrics <laughs> model or is this proposed as a metric? Model. Okay. It was in that in that category. Yeah. Yeah, I see this as yeah. Oh. It's it's yeah. All right. Now I understand. Now I understand the overlap challenge. Because project popularity, so awareness can be an indicator of adoption, um, and also adoption is part of what makes a, you know, provides awareness for a project. So you've got this kind of circular reference that yeah, I don't know what to do with that. Yeah, I was trying to sort it out like before the meeting, and I was like, <laughs> I can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> Will not do it in my brain. So, I mean, the other option is to say, "Listen, this is this is just enough as a proxy for understand." Like, we could add a comment in here that this is a proxy for adoption, you know, or a, an early indicator perhaps for adoption. And just leave it, mm -hmm. leave it at that, and then just kind of roll what we can from here the unreleased model into here because people were interested were you I think you were part of that conversation Don like taking a look at like listings on LinkedIn remember that mm -hmm. like if if there's a lot that's probably a pretty good indicator yeah that folks are using your stuff But I also don't well, want. I would maybe to just include, I would maybe include some language that that talks about the differences between between the two, and then I would maybe just kind of cross reference them that you may consider adoption as as part of looking at awareness, or from yeah. adoption you might want to also look at awareness as another another indicator for for adoption. Okay, so yeah, then it... I feel like two separate things, but I think they should both reference each other because I think people might be interested in both at the same time. Okay, so then in that yeah, sorry, case, Liang, were you trying to say something? I think we were talking over each other for a sec. Yes, thank you, Don. Uh, I have a question. Is it possible that people are adopting software or projects without knowing that he or she is adopting it? For example, it's shipped oh. as a part of a software. Is that possible? 
Yeah, that's yeah. actually in the risk working group. One of the things that we've defined are dependencies because that things that are important into a project that get shipped as part of it, where a developer just includes a dependency that is not on the list unless you use the chaos metric. And I know Augur does three different scans for dependencies within a delivered package. And I'm sure Grimoire Lab and other software does something similar. But that's actually a very significant question in the US right now. Yeah, and it's it's super common. I, I would say that I would say that this happens every time you ship an open source project. There are yep. there are sub projects of that project that you don't even know are there. Yeah, like I mean there there have been OSPOs who have focused intensely on understanding the you know of the eleven thousand projects they have which dependencies within them are the most common across that portfolio and, and it's a important and difficult question to answer right now i mean we answer it but it's not it's not like otter gets distributed with microsoft windows yet okay thank you that's my question thanks so would not saying this is perfect from an adoption perspective with this these four there's three that we don't have at the moment but these four kinds of things help understand adoption Like Don said earlier, I think a lot of these are proxies for adoption. Yeah. And is it the... dependencies or um so what you're really talking about there? So so this GitHub makes the distinction between oh, yeah. dependence. Um it's projects that you import, so it's your you're a down, you have a downstream dependency on an upstream project where you do an import, if I'm remembering. But if you're that. talking about, if you're talking about adoption, what you mm -hmm. actually care about are the dependents, not the dependencies. So That's if you're true. looking at, if you're looking at adoption of, um, of, of something, what you're not, you're not looking at the dependencies that that something has, you're looking at what is, downstream. Uh, what, what other projects depend on this particular software. Yeah. Um, and what makes this problematic is that's not in the GitHub API. No, and it's and it's it, um, how you know that <laughs> it's it's really idiosyncratic too because you can depend on package managers. You can't you can't get clone data for a GitHub project that you don't have uh, commit access to. Um, so there are a lot yeah. of limitations on the data we can get for this question. And it's it's not in the API because it's incredibly expensive to calculate. Um, is is what the, the problem is. If you there are ways to get at this. So criticality score counts the number of dependents. But I poked around the the Python code that generates that, and they're actually using. Last I looked, anyways, maybe they've improved it since then. But they were they're using um, the GitHub Search API um, to find it, which is a little bit problematic because it's not particularly robust. Um, but that, sorry, that's a technical challenge. We don't need to talk about that right now. So but about, it's an important indicator of adoption. It's one of the things that we look at, for example, when we're thinking about archiving a project or end of life a project, we look at how many other projects depend on it as part of the decision of whether or not we can even, whether or not that's even feasible, for example. So you do kind of get it. Sounds yeah, like you can get it. You can get it from the GitHub user interface. Okay. So under the insights tab, there's dependencies and dependence, uh -huh. and you can get it from there, but they don't surface it in the API. Gotcha. I gotcha. So you just have to like manually go there and take a look. Yeah. Okay. But you can, you can calculate criticality score does calculate it. Um, so there is a way to do it. And they use, at last I looked, they used the search API. Somebody with more Python skills than me should look at that and see how they get, how they get it. Yeah, having having been down this road before, I just know that there's this bricolage of package managers and data that doesn't solely exist in 
GitHub that you would need to actually get that they get to get some approximation to this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the stuff that's on GitHub would certainly be a subset for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then what is, is there anything from OpenSSF? This is the bit that I don't, I don't understand. I, was I use the OpenSSF scorecard, but I don't understand how that is any indicator of adoption. Okay. Yeah. Now you're talking about just pull up some scorecard data on this. Yes. So it does sound a little bit at least like perhaps these top three could help at least in the conversation. Yeah, for sure. Okay, and that'd be a nice metric model too, just three metrics that start. Okay, this is good. Thanks again for this conversation. Whether or not a piece of software is packaged or managed through a package manager is part of the OSSF scorecard. For what does that have seems relevant? Say that again, John. Or so, wait, so if a if a software project is package managed, that that's one element in the OSSF scorecard that OpenSS the OpenSSF produces. But that doesn't tell you how many people use it from that package manager. It, it just doesn't. says that they put it in a package manager, which I would argue everything is in a probably in some package manager, whether it's a distro one or or something else, but that to me doesn't indicate adoption, just that it's distributed that way. Can, is it maybe, and I don't know the answer to this, can you get um, download statistics from package managers? No, not really. All right. The problem is there's like a hundred package managers, right? You've got one. Yeah, oh, yeah. People. <laughs> yeah. Um, every single Linux distribution, Python one, is their own. <clears throat> one of many problems, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> So that's okay. the problem. That's that's why you can't measure adoption is because um, because you people distribute the software in a million different ways, and you have no way to get download statistics from those million different ways. That's uh, that's the whole core problem with measuring adoption, right there. You yeah. summarized it in like one sentence. Right. So, um, Don, because you're on this call, I'll I'll work on the influence one and kind of this, what we had talked about with adoption and awareness. So that we can talk about, I think it would be great to continue this conversation with the OSPO working group next week, just to kind of show how these are, you know, coming together in ways that are helpful um, for OSPOs. I'm probably going to miss that one as well because of KubeCon. Okay. I know. Oh, I am. Uh, we may I, not. I have to look at my notes. We may not be meeting because so many people are going to be gone. I was just going to say, I think a lot of people will be at KubeCon. So may, is that April 20th? I'm not looking at my calendar right now. Is that the next meeting? I It's right around, yes, April 20th. Okay, because I have a note on my desk at work that says cancel meeting for April 20th. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing it's that meeting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, challenge, the challenge is that if we cancel it on the 20th, um oh no never mind um i was thinking that the next one would conflict with ossna but it doesn't there's it doesn't. there's one okay there. well then why don't just as a side why don't we just plan on canceling for the 20th just because of kubecon and then it'll still give me enough time to work on this but then we could bring this up at the next meeting that we're focusing these a bit yeah that would be perfect okay great okay um Sean, did you have a comment? I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm good. Okay, good. Um, so then there was one thing that did come up. I just want to bring this up here. In we have like six minutes, and that's these last two things won't take very long. That this is again from the OSPO working group. That the metrics and like the stuff that comes from the metrics models, the numbers aren't super helpful in the conversation. <laughs> like mm -hmm. we need to consider how to translate those findings into a narrative form that, that helps in like conversations within the organization. So I think we do that a little bit, you know, with like user stories. We're trying to locate the model a little bit, but this 
I just thought this was a nice comment and I just wanted to bring it here. Yeah, Agreed. this is Sean and I talked a lot about this actually uh, the other day and that I, I think that in order for the metrics models to be really useful, we need to figure out how to get them implemented in our software. So like, you know, where do you find this metric model in Augur? Where do you find it in Grimoire Lab? Mm -hmm. How do you extract this data from our from our own tooling? Mm -hmm. um, because it feels like our, our tooling has gotten a bit uh, disconnected from the other conversations that we that we have within within the chaos project around metrics and metrics models. And I think it'll be an important part of thinking about uh, about the next evolution of of our software. So what what areas do we focus on? And I think I think some of it should be around you know new metrics and metrics models so that people can actually get get value out of them. And I, and I do think that um, something simple like the fact that we have stable web links for all of the metrics and metrics models now is going to help a lot because early on Augur tried really hard to create that link and the links kept changing. So we gave up. And so I think both Grimoire Lab, Augur, Compass, you know, we can use these stable URLs to know that if we're building the metric model, we can also point to the chaos definition within the software. And it might way. also, oh, sorry, Sean. <clears throat> yeah, I had this um, in a couple of projects, though, this, this idea of a narrative description. So there are so many mathematical values that things can have. And I think providing narrative descriptions in a tool set or a data scientific analysis where, you know, maybe part of what we do is look at what are some actual, what's the actual range of values we see around different metrics. And then what are the English, <clears throat> what are some common English language descriptions we can use to tell people what their values mean or how to think about their values in a context. I think that's like a five-year project to, to get all the way there. But, but I think it's, it's some, I'm hearing more and more about from many different perspectives, not just on this project, but other people that use data to make decisions that some kind of narrative is really what people need to make sense of data. Yeah, so I love the idea of being a narrative. I, I don't love the idea about assigning specific values um, because every project is is different. And I think that that becomes a sort of a slippery slippery slope. Um, what, what I do like the idea of doing, and it's something that I've done with some of the VMware ones, is, is talk about what the trends mean in those numbers. So this number going up, may mean this or this depending on your context this number going down might mean this or this or these you know this number going up while this number going down um might indicate you know and and i think you can i think you can talk a lot about what some of these things indicate um or might indicate um depending on depending on the situation so things like like you know big piles of neglected pull requests that could indicate that you don't have enough contributors working on a project. That could also indicate that everybody's working on a <clears throat> temporary, temporary <throat> problem that will resolve itself when people get back to working on the project because they're not all working on an event, a vacation, uh, you know, other other things. But but I I love the idea of putting some narratives behind behind what this could mean. That the interpretation I think is really important. I just don't like tying that interpretation to common values because I think that I think that encourages that's what everybody wants. That's what everybody asks for, but I don't think it's what they really want. Because once they I get it, that. they're like, that's no, wrong. That. We've been asked for red, yellow, green for <clears throat> years. Just yeah. years. <laughs> yeah. Just just give me a, you know, what's a good value for this uh -huh. number? And then it can ding my phone that I have to do the one thing. <laughs> Yeah, uh, this is value is different for a project the size of chaos versus the size of Kubernetes. This um, is great, though. I think that at least coming from a lot of the OSPO conversations, it's always kind of like there seems to be this gap that needs to be shortened, whether it's through software, whether it's through narratives that mm -hmm. that people are asking for help in, in shortening that. And the more we can think about ways to do that, I think the better for everybody. Yeah, for sure.
Okay, um, so we are at time, but I just wanted to add one thing. I, I did start a blog post. I thought maybe we should do a starter health metrics blog post. It's they're very simple. Um, Somebody so we, help math with Matt with the emoji art. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Sean. I appreciate sure. that. No. <laughs> um, so if you could change the emoji or if you see text that you would like to add, that would be great. I just think it would be nice to to kind of get something out there to help people just think about exactly what this this um, model is trying to accomplish. Yeah, I think that would be I think that would be great. Um, I mean, honestly, we might be like a sentence or two away. Like, really, it's just about that. <laughs> like, it's just these blog posts don't have to be long at all. Yeah. And Sean, you're on emojis. Yeah, I know. I just realized I should have shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you get on that one. Giving yourself more work, Sean. Yep. Uh, <laughs> All right. Do Don, could you take a look at that? Maybe just add a sentence or two? Yes, we'll do. Okay. That would be cool. All right. Everybody, thanks for a really productive meeting. I really appreciate yes. the time and the, the conversation. So. It's good to see everybody. So yeah, good to I'll see, see you all again. It's uh, good to see you. Today, probably. <laughs> all right, bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. See you soon.